The Anderson Hotel was covered with tarps and scaffolding these days, protecting people from falling bricks and fixtures loosened by recent winds, a storm that brought down the iconic neon sign. But the real danger may be inside, where things have been unchanged since the 1980s. These rooms are like little capsules of energy. The hotel was built in 1935, but never lived up to its potential as a premier place to stay. This is what we like to call the drunk's room. Caretaker Jeff Waldridge says by the 1950s, it was turned into apartments and became a place where drug addicts, prostitutes, and ex-cons could rent rooms for as little as $2 a day. That'd be the equivalent of a $30 room today, which is a horrible idea. Everyone was evicted nearly 40 years ago. The lease agreement stated that if you didn't pay your rent, they would lock your door and keep your things. So there were a lot of personal items up here from people, and I think that lends to some of the hauntings. Waldridge got permission to do paranormal investigations here about five years ago. The building may be untouched, but visitors are not. We've had people that have been bitten three times by human bite marks up here. Women will have their hair touched or they'll be, you know, have their hair tugged, different things like that. Waldridge has documented that at least 13 people died in this hotel, including three suicides. A manager shot himself, a man hanged himself in a closet, and a woman slashed her wrists in a bed. And we found this bloody mattress stuffed down the back stairwell. The hotel is a Halloween attraction in October, and many people chicken out before they get very far into the tour. And it's not always because of the jump scares and costumed characters. It's just a sense of dread they get from being in this building, a sense that they're being watched. Visitors tell of hearing footsteps, seeing shadow people, and a burning man near a bed, even though there are no reports that the hotel was ever on fire. Some of them know that they're dead, and they use that power to, to just mess with people. The haunted house is partially based on ghost stories attached to the hotel and embellished with the story of a killer clown. The building itself inspired that storyline after Waldridge started finding clown figurines throughout the building. It's almost like they're, they're giving us gifts. The part of the building connected to the most ghost stories, the so-called bad side, is off limits to most visitors. It's where Waldridge says people have the strangest encounters. There's one that people see, thank God I've never seen it. Uh, they call it the legless man and he walks on his hands with no legs. This hotel is full of mystery, perhaps filled with very lively dead people. Welcome to the Anderson Hotel. <laughs>Waldridge says he has an agreement with the spirits. He believes they will protect him as long as he protects the building. There are no plans to change a thing. It will remain what it is for the time being, and you know, I think the ghosts are happy about that. No one has rented a room in the Anderson Hotel in the last four decades, but that doesn't mean there's a vacancy. No early checkouts. <laughs>